All right, welcome back everyone to JFace Games. Today we're talking about a game called Samurai Spirit. Uh, for those that don't know what Samurai Spirit is, um, Shut Up and Sit Down did a review, I think a long time back. And it's a cooperative board game that I think has some interesting merit to it as a um, thinking about the mechanics of the RPG, right? And there's one thing that I would twist to it that I think would be, that would make it really interesting towards an RPG. So what is Samurai Spirit? Samurai Spirit, wow, look at this, was this um, combat, or was this um, Seven Samurai, Akira Kurosawa sort of remake game. You are seven samurai who are in a village that is being attacked by waves of bad guys, and you are sort of dealing with this, right? And so the main mechanic in the game is that if this is our character sheet, right, right here, you have this hit points over here, and then you have some other stuff over here. And in essence, what happens, whoop, what am I doing here? Zoom in appropriately. In essence, what happens is it's sort of a gamble mechanic where on your turn, um, you can do one of three things. You can draw a card, which when you draw a card, depending on that value is how many, how much damage you take. You set it next to your character sheet and you take that much damage. Or depending on the symbol over here, you can slot it over here one time for each one of those symbols. That's one thing you do. So you're gonna take damage. And whatever card is on top, whatever their special effect on the bottom is going to take effect at the beginning of your turn. So main take home there is you're drawing a card, it's telling you how much damage you take and you're putting it next to your character, right? Or you can do other things to kind of defend it. The next thing you do in your turn instead is instead of taking a card, you can give a friend a power, right? You can say, hey, take my power, right? And that's what you can do on your turn, as your turn. And the third thing you can do is you can uh, take a card face down and put it in the city, which means in essence, like you're not taking that damage, but the city, it's a gamble. The city's gonna take extra damage at the end of the turn in some way. And the whole point of the game is like, at the end of a round, you don't want this whole city to be burned down. So right off the bat, you can see how this could be a really interesting game mechanically, where, um, the main thing I like the idea of is you're randomly drawing this card and then you're trying to figure out what to do with it, right? And I could see this in an RPG, but the twist I have is I like the idea of potentially we as a team are then deciding what's happening with this, um, with this card or this damage, right? What I mean by that is we were just talking about in the powers video how I kind of like the idea of things are going to happen. Instead of damage being, or attacks being these random things where it's like, let me see if I can hit them, let me see if they can hit me, which sometimes can slog down a game because it's like, nothing's worse than a miss on both sides. Nothing's worse than being a DM and everything's missing so then the players don't feel stress. And by far the worst thing in the world is when you have a player who, you've only got one action, um, one standard action, whatever, you got one attack and it misses. And it's just like, well, that's my turn. It's awful, right? So what if in the game, attacks were gonna happen and you're gonna get hurt and it's, it's going to happen. So you're drawing a card, but now as a group, you are deciding who takes this, right? So, you're, so it's almost joint storytelling where the group is saying, I'll take that hit uh, because you know, and then you have to say, like, I jump in the fray, I get in front of them, I block it, I'm gonna charge up there and I'm gonna take it, right? And the way these cards could be is they could be quick index cards that the, that the DM has in advance, different beats in an encounter that would normally occur, etc. Or maybe you've designed some sort of like random 10 card deck that's just damage, right? But the DM thematically is saying why this 10 damage card has come out or this four damage card has come out. They have a thematic story that this is just denoting the severity of what they're describing. The players are now having to put it down and put it in different places. And in that deck, you could also have um, some form of symbols that denote different things that would happen, right? So now you think about like, um, if the serpent, I don't know, like tarot card style, like if the serpent comes up, that means that this effect that I said was going to occur in this encounter happens, right? So I'm, we've got the um, horde that's trying to get through the pass and they're defending the wall that's uh, blocking this pass. And if the snake comes up, that means that um, someone gets catapulted over the wall. You know, they, they start catapulting these goblins over the wall and these goblins have, you know, bombs on their back, I don't know. So now that's something else that's gotta be dealt with. So 
you could have those sort of thematic beats. Now, it's not very tactical in that sense, but I still think it's a really interesting way of playing around with theme and making a more streamlined game. Um, I'm sure you could do other stuff with it, but I love Seven Samurai, I, or the um, Samurai Spirit. I love this concept of, it's that gamble of, do I, do I draw, am I gonna play it through? Because if it goes through, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. Uh, but I think there could be some fun stuff you could try and design with this from an RPG system. All right, guys, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, um, hit the uh, like button, and uh, leave some comments.